Huawei brings their brand new P-series device that undercuts the flagship Mate line. However, the line between the two has gradually gotten blurred in previous generations. Does this new P-series device bring its own flavor on top of features that we may have seen in a previous Mate 9? Well, it's time to find out because it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? And this is our review of the Huawei P10 and P10 Plus. Now, remember to head on over to the AndroidAuthority.com full written review to not only take a look at my opinions, but also the opinions of our senior editor, Chris Carlin, who was able to take the P10 to places like the Geneva Auto Show. In this review, written and in the video section, we are going to uh, have both of our opinions be represented. The P10 devices are still pretty reminiscent of the previous P9 and other metal construction phones in the P series. They have smooth sides and corners, and all of the buttons are on the right side, including a subtle but very effective uh, color accent that goes around the power button. It's something that we really enjoy. The phone is also pretty thin, making it pretty easy to grip while remaining attractively slim. Now, I hardly ever take the stance that any Android device looks like an iPhone, but I literally felt like it when it came to the regular P10. Because of its slim profile and its overall size, I got the feeling that it was like an iPhone 7 when holding it. And now, this is not really a big deal, but I thought it was something that it was worthy of mention. A small panel on the top when it comes to the backing houses the dual sensor system, which does change in combination depending on which edition is used. Below that, however, is the potential for a couple of new colors. Our P10 unit has the new dazzling blue color, we don't have the greenery edition, but also there's another little quirk about the backing that we found kind of enjoyable. The only real feature to take note of on the front is the capacitive key below the screen that is not only where the fingerprint sensor is, but it is also what you can use in place of the soft keys. You can press it to go back, hold it to hit home, or swipe left and right in order to open up the recent app screen. It is pretty ingenious, we admit, but not only did it take a while to get used to, the recent app's gesture in particular wasn't as reliable as the soft key. So overall, the P10, the regular one, is the easier to use device, mostly because of its size. However, the P10 Plus does have more screen real estate. The design benefits mainly from the new colors, otherwise there are few frills to speak of in these tried and true metal builds. The screens do change between the two devices and not just in size. The P10's 5.1 inch display has 1080p resolution, while the Plus's 5.5 inch screen boasts 2K resolution. Now these are IPS screens and we give Huawei some credit for claiming that these screens will get up to 600 nits in brightness, which is pretty dang bright. And in our testing, we found that to pretty much be the case. As far as the colors go, they do tend to the cooler side of the color spectrum, but that's not that big of a deal when you can customize them in the settings. Which brings us to performance, and underneath all that surface, we have the Kirin 960 and the Mali G71 MP8 graphics. Benchmarks put both of these phones pretty high up on the food chain, which is not that big of a surprise, and our P10 Plus gets the bump up to 6GB of RAM and 128GB of onboard storage. Now, I've played plenty of games on the P10 Plus in particular, including a rather intensive port of Jade Empire. And with hours of gameplay under my belt, I didn't find any real hiccups with the game performance, and the same goes for all general app usage and also getting through the interface of EMUI. It is important to note, however, that higher resolutions in the Plus model make it work a bit harder under heavy graphical load. This is really only mentionable because of the graphics benchmarks, which favored the 1080p resolution P10 over the P10 Plus. Now, aside from the capacitive key that we have already covered, there are no real big additions in the hardware. All network connections are possible, including NFC. And I used the P10 Plus on the T-Mobile network without any issues when it came to speed on the mobile network or call quality. Our initial test using the Android Authority battery testing app showed that the screen on time could get up to five hours. And in my actual daily usage of the P10 Plus, I found that to be the case. With general usage ranging from Jade Empire gameplay to YouTube viewing, to a lot of music playing, and and even GPS navigation from time to time, I found the five hours of screen on time to pretty much be the case. Charging up the phone is also a breeze, especially if you use the included brick and cable. Now you'll be able to get from zero to 50% in about half an hour, which is awesome. However, you're going to get slower speeds if you use other cables and chargers. However, I didn't really find that to be too much of an issue, especially when using QC3 charger adapters. A regular 12 megapixel camera at f2.2 aperture is backed by a 20 megapixel monochrome sensor, and that's in the case of the regular P10. The P10 Plus gets a aperture bump to f1.8. But before we talk about the main camera, let's talk about the selfie or front-facing camera. An 8 megapixel f1.9 aperture shooter helps to get better low-light shots and is backed by what is 
pretty much only considered a powerful selfie mode that is a little bit uncomfortable in terms of its customization. The perfect selfie mode requires users to look in a few different directions so it can take control of things like your eyes and even your jawline. You can take a look here at the original photo and then what it looks like at 5 level and then full on at 10 level. You can almost barely recognize me. Otherwise, pictures on the front-facing camera and indeed the main camera benefit from a standard portrait mode that adds a little bit of a blur to the background and a few of these effects. It's a nice touch that falls short in implementation when you see that the bokeh actually eats up parts of the subject sometimes. Which brings us to the main camera. An actual aperture setting can be used to pull the foreground away from everything behind it on top of the portrait mode we just mentioned. It can get as low as f.95 aperture, which is impressive, but in reality, it doesn't fully emulate what real lenses can do at that aperture. And at the same time, there's still the problem that the bokeh could actually eat up parts of the subject. Video modes now include 4K and 1080p 60 frame per second recording, which is all good to see. Now, while the resulting videos look quite good and don't really lack in any one aspect, enhanced stabilization only works on the 1080p shooting modes. You have OAS available for 4K, but if you want the smoothest video, you'll probably have to stick with 1080p. Now, the main thing about the camera is that you have to learn its little quirks, and you also have to know a thing or two about photography to get the best photos. When it comes to HDR, for example, the best way of getting the best HDR photo is to hold on your subject that you want to focus on and then drag the exposure compensation over to a very bright portion of the blown out image. So that will allow for the highlights to be brought down while the shadows can be bumped up with the HDR enhancements. This isn't really something you would know off the bat, and you can't really just go to HDR and shoot a photo and expect it to be amazing. And while we will always enjoy seeing manual controls and built-in camera software, it does require you to kind of use those settings in order to get the best possible photo. The Huawei P10 and P10 Plus have great cameras, but they're not necessarily the most user-friendly auto cameras. But really overall, we see that the pictures from the P10 prove that the dual camera lens and sensor combo still works. Not to mention the fact that monochromatic photos look awesome because it has a 20 megapixel sensor dedicated to it. All pictures have a good level of detail and color modes can be changed through their output to vivid or soft aside from the standard profile. It's really the level of detail that makes us understand why this camera got good marks on DxOMark. Now while we wouldn't really recommend it for just anybody looking for a great auto shooter, if you know a thing or two or dive into the settings of the camera, you can get some of the great pictures that we would expect from the P10 and P10+. Plus. And finally, EMUI, the Huawei Android iteration that has seen a few changes in the last generations. In the P10, EMUI still has a large number of features that make it one of the most robust versions of Android so far, and it only gets better with Android Nougat, especially with the addition of Google Assistant. At first glance, EMUI kind of grates on the senses because it doesn't have an app drawer, but thankfully, even that is an option in the settings, and after adding the app drawer, a lot of what I didn't like about EMUI, even in previous generations, got remedied. That's only one facet of this operating system's capabilities, as there's a ton that the software can do and users may not even know it without looking through the settings. For example, the capacitive key we mentioned earlier, but also a floating dock that also can replace the soft keys by adding a small button that floats on the screen and then you can just press all of the different home, back, or recent apps buttons there. And that doesn't even include the knuckle feature that EMUI has kind of been known for already. You basically take a knuckle and you almost punch the display and do a number of gestures with your knuckle and it will trigger different shortcuts or applications. And all of these functions and more are under an interface that actually isn't too hard on the eyes anymore, especially after adding in the app drawer. We're not the biggest fans of the icon pack, but we give Huawei credit where credit is due because of the level of polish that they put into EMUI this time around. Not only do elements no longer really bleed past their designated areas, but even then animations are crisp and easy on the eyes and everything works very smoothly. We do admit that users might have a bit of difficulty fathoming all that it can do without some proper due diligence, but in general, you couldn't really go wrong with this version of EMUI. So with that, the Huawei P10 and P10 Plus are going to be available in a number of different markets, but availability in the US is still a bit, uh, let's say, blurry for now. In Europe, you'll be able to get the phone for 649 euros in the case of the P10 and 699 euros for the P10 Plus. And so there you have it, the Huawei P10 and the P10 Plus. These are very solid devices and really show that Huawei is blurring the line from its flagship mate line 
down to its P-series phones, and the P10 is a wonderful example of that. While we do think that its camera is quite stellar, it does require a bit of due diligence, and the display is great, the design is very solid, and one thing we really love about this phone is its battery life. It's one of those phones that requires users to kind of do their homework, and then once figuring out all of the different quirks of the phone, you might end up having one of the best Android experiences of 2017, especially considering that we are expecting all of the competition in 2017 to be pretty fierce. If you do have the ability to get the Huawei P10 and choose between it and other Android flagships this year, we think you might actually have a fight on your hands. So from there, thank you so much for watching as always, and remember to stay tuned to Android Authority for all of the best, including more about the Huawei P10, P10 Plus, and more from Huawei's lineup as we saw them at MWC 2017. You'll see reviews of all of the upcoming flagships here as well, so make sure you stay tuned by subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And then from there, you can head on over to androidauthority.com for even more from us because we are your source for all things Android.